What's up everybody, it's your boy Meme here. I was having this weird issue where I looked blue. I still kind of look blue right now, but um, it, I looked really blue. And uh, I thought it was like a weird thing with like the color temperature or something. Uh, so I was looking around for like color temperature settings on my webcam and they didn't work and it was very strange, but turns out it was just because I had my window open and it's overcast outside and it's blue outside. So that's why, um, that's why I looked blue. So now I still look blue, I just look a little less blue, which is, which is fine, I don't mind. Um, uh, yeah, uh, and you know, typically for the past three videos, I started recording my video. I'm like, oh, I should turn my light on, you know. Uh, but this time, I turned my light on um, before I record my video, so that's pretty good. Um, for breakfast, I didn't have anything. Well, I guess I had coffee. I had a lot of coffee for breakfast. Um, for lunch, I didn't have anything, and for dinner, um, we had. I had. I had a lot of tacos, so that was pretty good. Um, so I woke up at nine this morning and I didn't even check my phone. I, I, I was very sure to not have any distractions or be reminded of any distractions. Um, I woke up at nine, I started running the vacuum. I took a shower, um, you know, I brushed my teeth, put my contacts, did my face. Um, so then I don't have things like this weird red spot on my forehead, um, which also my face is looking a lot better. Uh, if you saw my video from like, a few days ago, I think my face looked a lot worse. Um, it's looking a little better now. It's because I haven't been working and I haven't been breathing in like paint fumes. Uh, I have a pretty minor latex allergy, and there's like latex in the paint, and that makes my face uh, that makes my face red. So that's why my face has been red. I, and I've spoken about this before, but you know, um, you know, I wash my face and stuff, and um, you know, then after that, I sort of just got out my laptop and I worked on. Uh, homework. I worked on homework from 9 a.m. to pretty much 5 p.m. today. Um, you know, it, it was generally pretty good. It was all like, um, it was all interpersonal communications for the workplace homework, um, which honestly, I don't, like, I, I don't think it was, um, <laughs> sorry, um, it was all interpersonal communications for the workplace homework, and honestly, I don't think, um, the re like it's due next Tuesday, right? And that's in a week, right? Uh, but the reason why I'm trying to do it all as soon as possible, like this is the main assignment to do. Um, the reason why I'm trying to do it all as soon as possible is because I think it's gonna be some of the easier homework I have. Um, I have a English 101 class with a pretty intense teacher and uh, my high school class last year was IB English and that's pretty much English 101, but I just wanted to make sure, you know. Um, and I, so I think, I think my homework in English 101 is going to be a little harder than this, probably. I'm really good at English, though, so we'll see. Um, and then I have like a really long math class with um, some pretty long exercises. And you know, last math class I could just sort of vibe out and you know do a pretty good um, job on like the essays and stuff. But uh, this time, I don't know. I like I don't with my scholarship program. You know, it's such a good opportunity, and I don't really want to just like. Like I was forced to go to math class previously, but now I'm voluntarily choosing to go to math class, right? And the government is like direct, like you would have to pay to go to math class, but instead the government, like the city government is paying for me to go to math class. So I just feel like I should really be paying attention to this math class, like um, as opposed to what I was doing in high school. So I, I think I'm gonna have quite a bit of interesting homework in that math class. So. Um, you know, I'm just trying to do all of my, like, stupid business homework. Um, not to call it stupid, but it's all a little silly. Um, so doing all of my business homework, um, you know, as soon as possible. And so basically it was just like reading this textbook. It's like a 20, uh, 29 page excerpt from our textbook. And um, you read it and I wrote notes on it, which is what took most of the time. Uh, and then you answer these like five questions. Um, let me show you my notes check it out um, so the textbook I can make myself larger there you go okay um, so the textbook pretty much actually I think it's actually better if I make the page larger and me okay okay that's good um, no it's not good there you go um, so yeah pretty much uh, what? Um, pretty much, it, it was this excerpt talking about different types of listening. So there's like conventional listening and evaluative and reactive listening and explorative listening. And um, 
and attentive listening, right? Um, and, you know, conventional listening is pretty much like small talk, uh, and it has interesting features. Like, this stuff is all a little interesting because, you know, like, I know how to talk to people, and you can sort of, you know, when you switch from, in this case, conventional listening, which is style one, to evaluative and reactive listening, which is style two, um, without even knowing what those are, like, I didn't know what those were until today, you know, but uh, when you don't know what those are, when you switch from small talk to an argument, you can feel something shift in your mind, right? You can feel like the vibe change, right? And, um, you know, previously, I just thought that's how it felt when you go from small talk to an argument. But turns out it's written down. Like, that's a thing. Like, that that changing from small talk to an argument is like a like a thing, you know? So, um, that's, that's what this is. So, conventional listening is, um, like, small talk. And small talk has interesting features. Like, um, like, uh, yeah, so if you want a different topic, you can listen insincerely to signal that you want a different topic, so you can just, like, not listen as much, and it'll show in your face, and it'll show in how you act, and so the topic will change, uh, depending on who's interested in what, right? And that's really interesting, and, um, when you do associational listening, which is, like, when you're, like, oh, this is like this in my life. Um, you could do either positive or negative, and it's a positive is when everybody enjoys each other's contribution, and I sort of said it's like a real world example is like when everybody's like riffing on a bit, you know? Uh, like that's a pretty obvious example of associational listening, but um, in negative associational listening, it's like when uh, someone like interrupts speaking flow to say something of their own. It's especially bad when they bring up a matter of quote, I'm quoting from the textbook here, serious concern expecting you to listen carefully and a shift to telling your story. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's just pretty interesting. Um, and then evaluative and reactive listening is pretty much a debate. Uh, but the funny thing is, is that this is like, this is super, like, like, theoretical, perfect debating, right? So, um, like, okay, yeah, so it's like, you would, so when you're doing evaluative and reactive listening, a uh, pretty common example of that is when you're, um, rehearsing a rebuttal for the other person in your mind as they speak, uh, as opposed to not just like entirely devoting yourself to listening to what this person has to say. Um, and you know, it's pretty easy to slide into being, uh, reactive, uh, and to be like anxious and defensive when in this mode of listening, uh, like it's pretty easy to like close yourself off and just not listen to what other people have to say. Um, so that's something to watch out for. And um, I underlined this and put it in caps and put it in bold because I thought it was really important. Um, you know, am I really listening or am I just anxiously waiting to talk? And uh, you know, that's actually something really interesting I saw in the textbook um, that I could apply a lot to my own life. Um, when I'm hearing people talk about things, I sort of immediately think of like things to say and uh, things to relate it to and stuff. And um, I am not sure if other people like it very much when I do that. Like, of course, you know, people are friends with me for a reason. You know, I must be doing something right, but um, I, you know, I feel like, you know, I could be, sometimes I'm just a little bit annoying in conversation, you know, and I feel like stuff like that, just like me anxiously waiting for talk is, uh, waiting to talk as soon as I hear a connection, like I think that, you know, that makes sense. Well, it doesn't make sense, but it's something that I do, and it makes sense as something that I do. Um, and then there's explorative listening, which is like also theoretical ideal talking. Um, it's like, yeah, used when you're in a new situation, you must ask questions to discover the imp information important to you. Um, there's this crazy thing called an information wheel where you have like a situation and then you find out like the ones for the business, others, self, and stakeholders. And like, it's a weird, like it's a weird thing. Like I don't even, I don't even know what's happening here. <laughs> like, well, I know it's, I know it's happening, but it's, it's weird. I, I've never, I've never seen like a conversation tree written out like this. It, you know, it's interesting. Um, it's good to have a positive tone. Uh, it's good to do probably open questions rather than either or questions, although both are pretty useful. Um, so to, it's better to be like who, what, where, when, or how, uh, as opposed to being a yes or no question, because when you ask questions like this, um, it's pretty easy to be like, oh, um, like, how, like, how do you, sorry, I need to scratch myself. It's like, how do you plan to solve this issue? You know, um, it's, you know, why is also a theoretical, pretty good start to an open question, but asking someone why they're doing something is sort of, has a lot of argumentative baggage toward it. Uh, Cause typically when you're, um, sorry, I'm looking at myself in the little, in the little uh, 
face cam and so that's why I'm like looking to the side like this um, but you know there's a lot of like argumentative baggage when it comes to asking someone why so it's, when you ask like why did you do this if it's like a genuine question and it's an open question and it's a theoretically perfect question um, it's not great because typically when someone's like why'd you do this it's like in an argumentative tone so it's better to just generally not ask why questions in, in the workplace at least um, and to be like you know what led to you making this decision you know something like that um, uh, yeah, and without a positive tone, it's easy to turn a style three discussion, a style three question into a style two question. Um, what else? Um, yeah, so I just continued about explorative listening. Um, something really interesting is that it's actually kind of bad to ask questions. Um, when someone who is pretty knowledgeable about a subject is like kind of going off on a subject, um, it's pretty important to not to only ask a question when they're totally done talking. And even before you ask a question, be sure to like ask like leading, like, like, well, I actually talk about it here. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty important to like invite to be like, oh, continue or say more. So like, if, if someone talking about a subject they're interested in and then they stop talking, say, say more, like continue, you know? And then just say that over and over until they can't continue and then ask a question like ask a question worst case scenario last thing you should do like if you look at this diagram here it's attend which is like looking at them in the eye and having like open body language there's acknowledge which is like being like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah or like just nonverbal um acknowledgement uh and then there's invite which is like inviting them to speak more and then there's summarize which is like so what you're saying is this and then there's ask and even then ask isn't like a dotted line because maybe you shouldn't even do this it like re like you really shouldn't ask like you shouldn't you shouldn't ask you shouldn't ask um oh my god gah gah i should turn on do not disturb i shouldn't even have notifications on i turned off notifications for for discord hold on Um, what am I saying? Uh, yeah, so, uh, it's all just, it's all just really interesting. Um, and, you know, I sort of have to talk about this because I wrote notes about it all day. I wrote all this today. <laughs> um, and, yeah, um, man, I pretty much summarized it all in that quick little thing. Um, yeah, and then you write these sentences. I'm gonna, you can just see my other monitor, but... <laughs> Yeah, that's fine, I guess. I'm gonna see if I can um, show my response. Yeah, so um, this is uh, the response. Uh, I really don't think I had to write this much about it. Um, I remember her even saying like, oh, don't try super hard in this class, but I, you know, I just, I, I, you know, I don't want to get like a B, you know, so plus written things are like 40% of our grade. A majority of our grade is like how we converse in class, you know, because the it's like a conversation class, like how to, how to speak to people in the workplace, right? But, um, you know, here it's it, like one of the questions is like describe two types of Miller listening styles. So I did that in my own words. None of this, none of this is chat GPT, by the way. You know, I, all, I wrote this all down. Chat GPT is kind of like a psyop. It's not like... Like ne like never like never use ChatGPT if you want good if like good info. But you it's it's so crazy. Like like dog like <laughs> like LLMs are like so the LLMs are like are like are like blockchain. Okay, it's it's so not real. Like it's not like it's not even not even real. Um, or maybe I'm just coping because I'm writing this much. Um, but. Uh, yeah, so this is like an example of like effective communication and um, this is an example of like, you know, uh, I talk about how why I can make someone feel defensive, like how it talks in a textbook. And here I talk about someone I know at work uh, who's, you know, uh, a persuasive listener. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, the reason why I didn't eat anything all day is because I wasn't really hungry. I was only really hungry like a couple hours before dinner. Um, and I ate a lot of food yesterday, so. Um, I'm gonna bring food to school tomorrow. I'm gonna bring a, a taco salad. Um,
I have a pretty big gap in my schedule tomorrow. Um, my The gap in my schedule is, so I'm gonna have English 101 uh, from 9 to 10.30, and then class ends at 10.30, then I have my next class at 3 p.m. So I'll have 10, 11, 12, one, two, five, like four and a half hours. Uh, it'll be fine, I'll just work on my work. I'll eat my food, I'll bring in food tomorrow. Uh, yeah, alright, see you soon.